To be a hero chapter 1 Once there was a boy called Norm who lived with his stepmother. Like all stepmothers she was wicked and she spent all day shouting at Norm. It's freezing in here. Where's the firewood? Oh if only Sabrina were here. Sabrina was her own daughter who had died the day Norm was born, the same day that Norm's father abandoned them in the dirty little hut where they lived. So Norm grew up under the thumb of his cruel stepmother, never allowed to play with other children, go too far away from the house or even to have time to himself. Despite all the misery that surrounded him, Norm was a happy boy. He cheerfully prayed for his stepmother's death every night and he was sure that it would eventually come. But it seemed his prayers were insufficient as she continued to complain and shout at him with just as much energy until he grew up into a young man. Unlike his stepmother, Norm changed a great deal. He grew tall and strong and tired of shivering inside their hut, unable to sleep from hunger, he started planting fruit trees and vegetables and gradually made friends with some farm animals so he could steal them away to the house. He even rebuilt the little hut, making it strong and waterproof. One day Norm looked at his stepmother in her dirty clothes and said, Mother, I'm leaving home. What, she spat. Where will you go? Who will look after me? You have animals, fruit trees and a good roof over your head. I think you can look after yourself well enough. As for me, I am going out to become a hero. A hero? She laughed wickedly in his face. Oh, my sweet child, you know so little of the world. Then it is time I went out and learned. Goodbye, mother. And with that Norm headed out into the world. While he had grown up sheltered and lonely, his stepmother had at least done one good thing for him and told him stories every night. So rarely did he leave home that Norm was convinced that the world was just like in the stories, full of noble knights and fearsome dragons, talking snakes and kind wizards, and he intended to find all of it. After wandering for several days, Norm came to a small castle. Following the stories he knew so well, he went to introduce himself to the king. Well, you are a strong young man, aren't you? said the king. Perhaps you would like to join my army. No, I want to become a hero. But my boy. Soldiers are heroes. Norm frowned. That wasn't in the stories. Don't you have some important task to give me? A dragon to kill, maybe? Hmm, said the king, stroking his bushy beard. No dragons, but I do have a task. Norm's ears went up. Yes. You see that tower over there? The king pointed out of the window to a tower on the far side of the castle. It looked cold and unwelcoming, the stones worn by time. It had to contain some kind of mysterious treasure or perhaps a fearsome monster. Norm's heart started to beat fast. I want you to clean it and fix the stones. Oh, said Norm, disappointed. That's all. Well, it is haunted, you see. Nobody else in the castle is brave enough to do it. Saying this, the king stared at some of his men, who pretended not to be seen. Ghosts! Norm said with excitement. Fantastic! And what will my reward be? Oh, I don't know. I have some magical pear that my brother gave me. He said it would allow the eater to talk to animals. A waste of time, in my opinion. I severely doubt cows have anything useful to say. And will I be allowed three objects to take with me to the haunted tower? The king frowned. What on earth gave you that idea? The only three things I'll be giving you are a cloth, a bucket of water and a broom. Now hurry up and go. So Norm went to the tower and got to work. He was used to gardening and cleaning the yard so he tidied up the tower in no time and as he repaired the stone he started to worry that the ghosts might not appear at all. But just as the sun was setting he heard a voice behind him. Well 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 if it isn't my next victim. Norm turned around to see a silvery figure standing in front of him shining in the evening sun. 
He was a wide man in every way, his stomach stretched out over his belt, his beard spread out like a picnic blanket, and his smile looked like it could hold a plate. He was dressed like a knight, a sword at his hips. You're the ghost of the tower. Norm said in excitement. I bet you want to eat me. My word, said the ghost, visibly disgusted. I want no such thing. No, you're going to be the victim of my conversation, dear boy. Do you know how lonely it gets in here? What you don't even want to scare me? Of course not. Then you'd just run away. If you're so bored why don't you leave? The ghost said humph and crossed his arms. Nobody seems to know how being a ghost works. I can only leave a place if I am wanted by someone. Otherwise I must haunt the last place I was wanted. Of course I wasn't aware of that myself during my adventuring days but since then. Adventuring? Were you a hero? The ghost's face lit up like a candle. Why yes I was. It's a pleasure to meet someone who still believes in such things. Tell me boy, do you dream of saving beautiful princesses and killing powerful dragons? Yes, yes, said Norm, dropping his broom in excitement. Well then, prepare to be disappointed. That sort of heroism hasn't been around since long before my time, let alone yours. Norm felt his heart break in two. Then what kind of heroic things did you do? Oh you know, I rescued an escaped farm animal here, fought in a battle there. I trained young knights and found evil criminals. You're just a mercenary. Hey, said the ghost, turning a deep shade of red. I am not one of those stupid little mercenaries, thank you very much. It wouldn't hurt to pay some respect to your elders, boy. Norm lowered his head. I'm sorry. It's just, it's the first time I've met another hero. That's all right, said the ghost, floating over and patting him on the back. But Norm couldn't feel the pats and the ghost's hand just flew through him. Tell you what, if you take me out of here, I'll give you advice on how to be the best hero you can be. Or at least on how to get people to buy you drinks and bars. Wonderful, said Norm. Now I just have to finish this work. What's your name, by the way? Elric. Can I call you El? Absolutely not, said Elric, but he couldn't quite stop himself from smiling. The ghost sat in the corner and impatiently waited while Norm fixed up the wall, chatting the whole time. Then Norm told the ghost to wait there while he went to get his reward. My my you made quick work of that, said the king. You could be a royal cleaner, you know. No thanks, said Norm. I have an adventure to go on. Yes, yes, well I'm sure this will help you. Sorry, it got a bit damaged. The king handed him the pear wrapped in a handkerchief. Clearly its magical qualities hadn't done much to preserve it as it was black and soft and leaking juices. How long have you had this? I don't know, said the king. I just threw it onto the pile of magical objects. There are so many these days. Norm waited until he and Elric were safely out of the castle and in the forest before he unwrapped the pear. I wouldn't eat that if I were you, said the ghost eyeing the rotten pear suspiciously. Heroes have no fear. There are many more reasons besides fear to not eat rotten food. But don't let me stop you. It would be rather amusing if we were both ghosts. Norm ignored him. Just think of what he could do if he could talk to animals. It was too great an opportunity to ignore. So he held his nose, took a deep breath and forced the pear into his mouth. My word, I didn't think you were actually going to do it. Norm wanted to throw up, but forced himself to swallow the pear whole and then, just to make sure the magic worked, licked the remaining juices off the handkerchief. Ugh, he cried. His eyes watered, his nose ran, and he coughed helplessly. But eventually he recovered and he jumped up and said, let's go find an animal friend to talk to. Much to his surprise, however, every time they approached a bird or a fox, the animal just ran away. Wait! 
Come back, cried the boy. You need to be more careful, said Elric disapprovingly. Don't just run at them. Listen. So Norm crawled into the bushes and waited until some birds landed overhead and then listened in on their conversation. His heart sped up. He had always wondered what animals were talking about. What magical secrets might they hold? Horrible weather today, Sharon, said one of the birds. Just horrible, said the other. Say, Bob, ate any good worms recently? No, Teron. The worms just aren't juicy at the moment. I blame the horrible weather. Oh, it is horrible weather, isn't it, Bob? Absolutely disgusting. I know, I know. I heard from Harry that the worms aren't so good at the moment. Oh, that'll be the weather. Hey, Sharon, do you want to sing for a bit? I can't, Bob. The weather's too bad. Norm stared up in shock. This was what birds talked about. Hey, he said standing up. Have you heard about any princesses that need rescuing around here? Bob and Sharon exploded into the air, flying around and screaming wildly. A human is talking to us. A human is talking to us. It must be the bad weather, Bob. Let's fly away. So the birds flew away, and once again Norm was alone with Elric. Well, asked the ghost. Any juicy gossip? Never mind, mumbled Norm, defeated. Let's find somewhere to sleep for the night. Sleep? You know I don't sleep, my boy. I'm a ghost. That night was the worst in Norm's life. Not only was Elric unable to keep his mouth shut, waking Norm up with his endless chatting, but Norm had to go to the toilet many times, the rotten pear having taken effect. And on top of that, just like the birds had said, it rained heavily throughout the night. In the morning, Norm felt like death warmed over, but he insisted they march until the next big city. You look just miserable, my boy, said Elric, sounding almost sorry for him. I would carry you if I could. When they arrived in the city, Norm went straight to the king and asked him if there were any heroic things he could do. Hmm? Huh? Well, my Pegasus has run away, you see. A flying horse. Norm said, gasping. Yes, that is what a Pegasus is. Thank you. He was a fearsome warrior, but he disappeared a few weeks ago. Whoever can find him will get an endless supply of riches. Well, not endless. But by that point Norm had already been filled with a heroic urge so deep that he ceased to understand the king's words. I'll find you that Pegasus, he said, before running off into the forest. What are you doing, said Elric. You should have asked where he might be. Doesn't matter. I'll search every inch of the kingdom. Elric sighed in annoyance. Sit down, boy, and wait a minute. Norm reluctantly sat down on a rock and watched Elric. The ghost flew into the air, higher and higher, until his transparent body disappeared into the blue sky. After several minutes he returned with a big smile on his face. Found it. Follow me. But be quiet. I don't want you to scare it away. So Norm and Elric ran through the forest, but then Norm got tired and Elric told him off for being so loud so they walked instead. Chapter 2 when we last saw our hero in training, Norm, and his ghostly teacher, Elric, they were walking at a sensible pace through the forest to recover the king's lost Pegasus. After several hours of walking, filled with Elric insisting they quietly play a variety of childish word games, they arrived at the cave where the creature was hiding. Norm gasped when he saw the magnificent animal. Its wings were long and elegant, as if taken from an angel, and it had skin as pure and white as snow. But far from wandering elegantly through the trees, the creature was sitting on the floor of the cave reading a book. I didn't know horses could read, muttered Elric. He's not a horse, said Norm. Now wait here while I go and talk to him. I don't want you to scare him off. No, hissed the ghost. 
You're no good at this even if you can talk to animals. Let's do it my way. We'll capture a foal and trap it. The pegasus will see it and its animal instincts will kick in. And then you'll throw a net over it and Bob's your uncle. We'll be back at the castle in no time with the pegasus. Bob's not my uncle. I don't have an uncle. Bob was the name of that bird. Norm paused and thought over Elric's plan. He didn't like it for several reasons. For one, how were they going to get hold of a foal and a net? But more importantly, it didn't seem like the heroic thing to do. And yet, what did Norm know of heroism? All his attempts at it so far had failed. But he couldn't deny his heart. No creature that magnificent deserved to be caught in a net and dragged to its master. So Norm stood up and said, Hello there. The Pegasus jumped, ripping a page out of the book with his hoof. Don't be scared. I'm not going to hurt you. What book are you reading? For a long moment, the Pegasus didn't move a muscle and just stared at him in silence. Then he said, How can you talk to me? I ate a magic pear. Hmm, I thought they stopped growing those years ago. Well, if you must know, I'm reading the Almanac of Dragons. Fancy, said Norm. What's it about? Dragons. Oh, I probably could have guessed that from the title. What do you want, said the Pegasus. Despite his overwhelming beauty, he spoke in a cold, practical manner. I, uh, he couldn't just say he wanted to take him to the king, could he? I heard you ran away from the king. Why is that? And why would I tell you? You're just looking for a reward. Is he offering a endless riches this time, or did he say he would be forever thankful? The first one. But no, I'm not here to help the king. True. You don't look like one of those mercenaries the king hires. You're not even wearing armor. I could crush you with one hoof. Norm gulped. Yeah, you could. The Pegasus sighed. I suppose there's no harm in telling you why I ran away. Perhaps you can pass the message on to the king for me and he can leave me alone. The Pegasus stepped out of the cave and walked around, never taking his eye off Norm. I never liked that fighting business. I'm a scholar, really. I've fought in many battles, here he moved his neck to point at his scar-covered back, and I've killed many men, but for what? So that a drunk man can fill his pockets and continue to crush the people under his boot? Did the king hurt you? The Pegasus turned round and stared at Norm. Yes, he did. I'm sorry. I know what that's like. I'm not a warrior, at least not yet. I want to be a hero. But my stepmother. Is wicked and beats you every day? Almost. She never hit me. Just said mean words. We've got almost all the clichés in the book between us. A drunken king and a wicked stepmother. Next you'll tell me you're being accompanied by the ghost of a great hero who's teaching you how to become one yourself. I'm no cliché, bellowed Elric, floating out of the bushes. Speak of the devil, said the Pegasus. This is Elric. It's kind of a long story. I have a vivid imagination. I can figure it out. But really, what are you looking for, boy? Most people wouldn't track down a killer Pegasus without a good reason to do so. I admit. I was looking to get the king's reward. That is until I saw you. You're beautiful, he whispered. Oh, so if I was ugly you would have sent me back to the king? I can tell you don't read books. You're just full of incorrect assumptions. Hey, leave the boy alone, cried Elric. He's just a kid doing his best to become a hero. He may be stupid, but he's a uh, very brave. He said this last part in a very doubtful tone. Thank you, Elric. The Pegasus smiled. My apologies. I haven't been able to talk to anyone apart from old war horses for many years now. My manners have deteriorated. 
And now I must ask you a favor, will you go back to the king and tell him that I died? Spare no details, tell him that I was cut apart and that my body parts are being eaten by birds. You, said Norm. I mean. I can. I think that's the only way he'll leave me alone. All I want is to read my books in peace. But there was a hint of loneliness in the beautiful creature's voice. All right, said Norm. I'll tell him. Thank you. I am aware that the temptation of gold can conquer even the strongest men, so if you do this for me, I will give you a reward myself. Meet me on that hill at sunset. He gestured into the distance where a low hill rose up out of the forest. Why is it a magical hill? No, it just means I'll be able to see if you're coming with the king's men to betray me. And believe me, you don't want to betray me. So Norm went to deliver the message to the king, which was considerably difficult on his part, as acting was not one of his strongest skills. But with Elric's coaching, the ex-hero seemed to be exceptionally skilled at lying, they made it out of the castle and headed for the hill, where the Pegasus was waiting for them. I realized I didn't tell you my name, said the creature. I'm trying to become more polite, but it's a difficult process. I am Kvok. Ah, uh, that's a beautiful name, said Norm. Don't lie to me. It's ugly. Anyway, here is your reward. Norm blinked and looked around. Ah, uh, is it an invisible sword? Kvok snorted. You need to get over your obsession with magical objects. No, it is me. Huh. I know I said before that I just wanted a quiet life of reading, but a pegasus does get lonely. As foolish as it seems, I'd like to accompany you on your journey. Fantastic, said Norm, his mind filling with romantic images of him riding Kvok dressed in a shining suit of armor. Don't get any ideas though, said Kvok. I won't let you ride me unless it's strictly necessary. Oh, said Norm, trying and failing to hide his disappointment. Now, I had a fly around and collected information, said Kvok, and I heard about a dragon who's been attacking the city of Orfever to the east, stealing jewels and gold from the people. I couldn't believe that sort of thing still happens, but it makes a perfect task for a young hero in training, don't you think? Yes, cried Norm, jumping into the air and punching it. Just one problem, my boy, said Elric. You don't have a sword, a shield, or even a piece of armor. Besides, you're completely untrained. Kvok smiled devilishly. Don't worry. I have a plan. So as they traveled to the city on foot, the Pegasus explained his plan to them. Clearly, those books he had been reading, Norm was forced to drag the heavy chest full of them, contained some awful stuff, as the plan was the work of someone with a truly sick mind. I thought you didn't like violence, said Norm. I never said that. I just like applying it strategically. When they arrived at the city of Orfever, it was clear to see why the dragon had chosen it. It was covered in wealth, the streets made of elegant stones with romantic lamps and imposing statues on either side, down which paraded finely dressed citizens with noses almost as high as their expensive hats. The mayor even lived in a tower of gold. Ah, you have come to deal with our dragon problem, yes, he said, eyeing their odd appearance with a frown. Fantastic. You'll find its lair an hour north of here, in the caves. Aren't you going to help us, perhaps with some legendary armor or magical objects, said Norm hopefully. If he couldn't live out his dream of fighting a dragon, he could at least get some free equipment. The mayor scoffed. Do heroes not equip themselves these days? You should consider yourself lucky I even allowed you into my home with such dirty clothes. Now go and do your job, boy. So the three adventurers carried out their plan. First, they had to acquire a sword. Kvok told Elric and Norm to go relax at a pub, giving them some coin to buy drinks with, while the Pegasus went off to find a sword. Norm was sure that he was in fact stealing it, but he didn't dare challenge the creature. He was still in awe of him and the more he talked to Kvok, the more that awe turned to fear. 
he did not want to get on his wrong side. Once they had the sword, they went into the grasslands surrounding the city and found every snake they could, breaking their necks and collecting them in a bag. It made Norm feel a bit sick, but Kvok insisted that they follow his plan so he kept quiet. Elric flew around, finding the animals, but it was Norm who actually had to kill them and he got more than one bite on his arm. Thankfully they weren't the poisonous kind. Once they had collected a heavy bag of snakes, they went to the dragon's lair, poured the dead creatures onto the ground, and got to work. Each one they sliced open, spilling its guts out onto the earth. Dragons, although they view themselves as far superior, feel a great connection to snakes, because they believe that is their biological origin, Kvok had said on their way to Orfever. If we launch a psychological attack we can make it angry, and when dragons are angry they're stupid. They have very strong biological instincts you see. During my information gathering I discovered this one has a weak spot on its stomach. So we'll get it angry and then you'll fly in Norm, yes, I'll let you ride me just this once and cut it open with the sword. Norm was frightened but terribly excited at the same time. Elric, too, became enthusiastic, coaching Norm on sword techniques during every spare moment. Once they had finished their reptilian murder session, they ran into the bushes nearby and hid, waiting for the dragon to come out. And you too must wait, dear reader, because this story has yet another chapter to go. But do not worry friends soon you will find out the thrilling tale of the battle with the dragon. You simply must be patient like a snake in the long grass although hopefully your guts will remain in place. Chapter 3 When we last saw our heroes, and I do use that term lightly, they were hiding in the bushes, waiting outside the lair of the dragon, the ground covered in smelly snake guts designed to wake the monster's rage. They spent many long, tedious hours waiting. Norm looked around and found some mushrooms which Elric encouraged him to try but Kvok was convinced they were deadly poisonous and this lead into an endless debate which made Norm regret finding the mushrooms in the first place. Eventually though just as Elric was explaining his detailed encounters with mushrooms during his heroic journeys, the dragon came out of the cave and Norm told them to shut up. It was a fearsome creature or at least it would have been if it was the correct size. It had skin as black as the night, razor-sharp claws and teeth, its wings spreading out like city walls, or at the very least, like very threatening bedsheets. But the dragon was small, far smaller than any of them had expected, and as it walked outside, yawning, Norm found it hard to believe that this little thing had threatened any town. As soon as the dragon saw the snakes it gave a cry and jumped backwards, its eyes wide at the sight before it. It started shaking, its hands curling up by its sides. Yes, here it comes, said Elric. Get ready, boy. Quietly Norm started to climb onto Kvok. But the dragon did not burst into a fit of rage, breathe fire or scream into the sky. It cried. The sound was loud and sharp like a knife, forcing Norm to cover his ears. It made the acid in his stomach shake like a drum, but there was nothing frightening about the dragon's reaction. Big fat tears rolled down its cheeks as it made an expression of complete misery and bit at its claws. Vu -vu 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 how would do this? The dragon fell to the ground and curled up into a ball. It seemed he was trying to squeeze every last bit of water from his body, and just when they thought he had finished, he opened his eyes again, saw the snakes, and began crying once more. This is the fearsome dragon that is attacking the people of Orfever, said Elric, alarmed. I've fought kittens more threatening. Norm stared at the dragon, frozen by the scene. Kvok pushed him with his nose. Go on, boy. Now's our chance. Norm shook his head. No. He dropped his sword to the ground and walked through the bushes. Hello there. The dragon didn't hear him so loud was his crying. I said hey. The dragon rolled around on the ground, a pool of water forming beneath him, but he still did not hear Norm. H-E-Y screamed the boy. The dragon stopped, opened his eyes red with tears, and looked up. 
W. What do you want? Do you know who did this? Norm sighed heavily. He was about to take a risk. As pathetic as this dragon was, he was probably still dangerous. But he couldn't hide the truth from him. We did. We? Reluctantly, Elric and Kvak approached from the bushes. The dragon had sat up now, sniffing and rubbing his face dry. We were trying to be heroes, said Norm quietly. We heard you were stealing from the city and, well, I don't understand, said the dragon, shaking his head. Why didn't you come and attack me like all the others? You have defeated others, said Kvak, practically sneering. Not myself, no. They walk into my traps and then I tie them up, fly them somewhere else, and leave them there. Sometimes the same ones come back several times, but they never get through. Elric snorted. It's like someone throwing a spider out of their home. Personally, I always crush them. You what? said the dragon shocked. You kill poor innocent spiders? The dragon looked like he might burst into tears again just at the thought of it. We wanted to launch a psychological attack, said Norm, staring at the ground. Clearly it was a mistake. If you care this much about killing me, the dragon rolled over, revealing his stomach. Then do it, human. The sad, pathetic creature was gone, replaced by a cold determination. Spill out my guts onto the ground. If you'll kill others in my name, then I'd rather you ended me directly. I'll just ask one thing of you, look me in the eyes while you do it. Uh, said Norm, suddenly feeling very uncomfortable, I've decided that we don't want to kill you any more. Humph, said Elric, folding his arms. It would be shameful to kill such a strange thing. There's no joy in fighting an enemy who doesn't strike back, muttered Kvak. Secretly, I was hoping you would give the boy a serious injury and he would end up bleeding to death in a manner truly appropriate of a hero. Elric and Norm stared at the Pegasus. What? I was joking. Obviously. The dragon rolled back onto his feet. Well, if you're not going to kill me then move aside. I've got work to do. Apparently he had gotten over his emotional reaction rather quickly. Where are you going? said Elric. To steal? Steal is an ugly word. I prefer. Reappropriate. Dot. Taking gold to your lair isn't reappropriation, said Kvak, sneering. Who said I was taking it to my lair? Have you seen the west side of Orfever? They don't like to show it to visitors. It's where all the poor live, the homeless, the children without parents, the diseased. I bring the gold to them. I'm just redistributing the city's wealth. I could murder those people and the mayor wouldn't care, but because I'm helping them, I'm public enemy number one. The dragon spread his wings and prepared to take flight. I'm snivelly, by the way. If you cross me again, I will tear out your guts like you did to those poor snakes. Norm gulped. Snivelly was unpredictable, but there was no doubt that he was dangerous. If you don't want to kill me, the least you could do is clean up the mess you made and hold a funeral for each of them. And with that Snivelly flew away to do his work as Robin Hood. Norm scratched his head. You know, I'm starting to think this hero business isn't all that great. Come on, let's clean this up. What about the funerals, said Elric? It would take weeks to do them all. We'll just hold one big one, said Norm, hoping that that wouldn't anger the dragon. Kvak sneered. I should have stayed in my cave and read more books. I wouldn't have to bury snakes and give them funerals there. They got to work, digging a hole in the forest and dumping the snake bodies inside. Elric held the funeral as he claimed he had attended the deaths of many brave heroes, but it soon became apparent that he was just making things up. And uh, I am sure that these snakes were very, very loved. If only cruel fate had not taken them away so soon. They could be going sssssss and shedding their skin and doing whatever else it is that snakes do. Of the three of them, Norm was the most sorry for their actions. 
Elric couldn't take things seriously but he did at least regret what they did. Kvok was quiet and grumpy but Norm was sure he would understand eventually. Later that evening, Snively returned to his cave and seeing the clean ground smiled broadly. I didn't think you'd actually do it, he said sniffing and wiping his cheek. Sorry, I've been crying again. One of the kids showed me his drawing and it was so impressive. He drew a perfect little spider or maybe it was a kangaroo. I'm not sure. Would you like to come in for a cup of tea? With nowhere else to go they happily agreed. Snively lead them through a complicated series of tunnels, undoing his traps to let them past, until they arrived in a cozy little home, complete with a well-stocked kitchen. They sat down and got to chatting, telling the dragon all about their adventures so far. Or at least, Norm and Snively chatted, while Kvak and Elric exchanged dark looks and whispered to each other. And what's the point of being king if you're not even going to use your magical pair? He let it go rotten. Stupid man, really. I mean, what king abuses his own horse? It made me feel sick. And don't get me started on that mare. He made you sound so awful. If I see him again. Oh, I completely agree. Why do you think I started this in the first place? MMM MMM. You would make a great dragon, you know. You're so right. I should eat him just for that. Eventually Elric and Kvok's whispers got too much for Norm and he turned around and said, What? You two have been whispering all evening. What are you talking about? We were just discussing your quest, my boy, said Elric. Or rather, the lack of it. Norm, said Kvok, slapping a hoof on the table. Do you actually want to be a hero? Norm's lip shook. Of course I do. How could you ask such a thing? It's only that. Well, I did tell you that heroes don't really exist anymore. But you convinced me for a while that they did, with that endless enthusiasm you have. But heroes don't go around helping ghosts, freeing Pegasi and making friends with dragons, and they certainly don't speak badly of the kings they serve. Are you calling me a bad hero? said Norm, going red. You know it's my dream. No, said Snively, putting his claw on the boy's hand. What they're saying is that you're far too good to waste your time trying to become some idea of a fairy tale hero. You can just be you. Norm looked between the three of them. They all seemed to know him so well, far better than he'd ever known himself. He couldn't understand it. But if I can't be a hero, what will I do? And what will you two do? Snively grinned, wrapping his wings around the three of them. You can come live here. There's plenty of space and it's completely safe. Maybe. Then the people of Orfever will start to see that I'm not all bad and overthrow their mayor or something revolutionary like that. Humph, said Kvok, raising his nose proudly. I'll consider it. I suppose it's better than living in that dusty old tower," Elric muttered. And I wouldn't be having to save Norm's life every five minutes. What do you say, boy? Shall we settle down here? Norm stared into his tea and then said, It's a wonderful idea. But first I have something I have to do. Alone. The next day Norm set off for his stepmother's house. He took some of Snively's reappropriated wealth and bought a set of warm clothes from Orfever as well as a magic log that burned forever. She had always complained about being cold, but with good clothes and a never-ending fire, she would be more than warm enough. When Norm finally arrived, however, he did not find the house loud with his stepmother's complaints. He found the vegetables in the garden dead, the roof collapsed, and the animals run away. The place was empty, apart from his stepmother's bones lying on her bed. She had never been a good mother or even very nice, and yet he found himself shedding tears for her. She didn't deserve to die alone, abandoned by her only child. It made him think of his companions. If he hadn't rescued Elric from the tower, would the ghost have gone mad with loneliness? 
If he hadn't freed Kvok, would he have died under the hands of a cruel king? If he had fought Snively, would he have killed a kind soul as well as the hope of all the poor in Orfever? He had abandoned her and she had already faced so much loss, her husband leaving her and her daughter dying. She had been nasty but not wicked. If it wasn't for the stories she told him he would have never left on his adventure in the first place. I'm sorry mother he said, touching her bones. But there is one last thing I can do for you. He packed up her remains, got on his horse, and rode to Snively's lair. He buried the bones outside it. You'll never be cold here. It's warmed by dragon fire. From that day on Norm, Elric and Kvok lived happily with Snively the dragon. They couldn't have been more different and yet they somehow got along, although they still had plenty of arguments. They all helped out with Snively's missions into Orfever and sure enough, with their help the abused masses of the city rose up and overthrew their mayor, founding an independent city-state based on equality. Kvok got to brutally kill the mayor, which he greatly enjoyed, Elric taught the new generation of children to read, and Norm flew on Snively's back to other cities and countries to spread the word of the dragon and to redistribute the happiness and wealth that the four friends owned. Norm never dreamed of becoming a brave hero again because in reality he had been one all along.